Facebook's most famous contribution to the open source community is, of course, React, but it's not the only library that they have. If you look at their GitHub repository, you'll see that they have a whopping 114 repos, including the Jest testing library, Flow for adding static typing to JavaScript, DraftJS, which is a text editor framework, and of course, prop types for React. Beyond that, Facebook also has a separate repo called Facebook Experimental, which they describe as Facebook projects that are not necessarily used in production, but are being developed in the open nevertheless. One of the libraries published by Facebook Experimental that's getting some attention recently is Recoil. Recoil is a simple state management library for React apps, and it can be used in a similar way to how you would use context. Now, in the last video, I discussed state in React, and we took a look at context and the use context talk. So if you haven't watched that video yet, I'll link to it in the description for you. They say Recoil is not yet recommended for use in production apps, but we've been using it at work since late last year, and I'm using it in my own SaaS project without any issues. So before we dig in, just a reminder that if you like these videos, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my channel. It'll help other people discover my videos and also help the channel get off the ground. All right, let's take a look. So for this demonstration of Recoil, we're gonna use the same demo app that I used in last week's tutorial, which was for context. So you can see we have a business name with an input. Anytime I change the text inside a business name, it's gonna change the title up here and it's gonna change the footer below. So the first thing we need to do is we'll take a look at the Recoil docs. And we're gonna copy yarn add Recoil, paste that into the terminal. And that's now installed Recoil. So I'll just check package JSON. And you can see here, we now have Recoil installed. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to import Recoil root. So if you have a look at app.js here, you can see that we have business name context.provider. So this Recoil root will go in the same place where we have this business name context provider. So I'm gonna start off by doing import Recoil root uh, from Recoil. And I'm going to, inside of this, and wrap home page in recoil root. And we're gonna save that. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to create an atom. So as you can see here, an atom represents a piece of state and atoms can be read from and written to from any component. Components that read the value of an atom are implicitly subscribed to that atom. So any atom updates will result in a re-render of all components subscribed to that atom. So this is how you create an atom. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a separate file and I'm gonna call it atoms and it's a JavaScript file. And I'm going to import atom from recoil. I'm gonna call this business name state. And then inside of it, I'm gonna give it a key uh, which, as you can see in the doc, they take the name of the atom and they use that for the key. This must be a unique ID nowhere else in your application should you create a second text state, or in our case, business name state. So they must be unique to the application. So I'm going to give it a key of business name state, and I want to give it a default value. Um, now, as you can see, the default value is the initial value of that state. Um, for us, we're going to give it an initial value of Dunder Mifflin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to export that from this file. Okay, now I'm going to go into the home page. And you can see here we're using context at the moment to set the business name and to read the business name. So we're going to change that from using context to using recoil. So if I go into API reference and click on state, what I'm looking for here is use recoil state. So if I go into the home page, I'm going to import use recoil state from recoil. And I want to import the atom that I just created. So I'm going to do import business name state from Adams and thank you VS code and use recoil state looks almost exactly the same as reacts use state hook. So I'm going to do const business name, set business name. And instead of use state, I'm going to do use recoil state and I need to pass in the atom as that first argument. So business name state. What I can do here is now delete this. 
And I'm going to delete this because we're not using it anymore. If I give that a save, go back to the application, give it a refresh just to show you that everything's cleared and using the default values. And you can see we still have Dunder Mifflin here. We still have Dunder Mifflin here and we still have Dunder Mifflin here. Now, the title and the footer are currently being used by context, but this value here is now being used by recoil. So if I change this, you can see that these aren't being updated because like I said, they're using context, but this is working now. So if I'm gonna go back, so I'll go back to the title and what I'll do is I'll pass in business name equals business name. And I need to make sure that we have the prop in this title component, and we don't want to use context anymore. And you can see now the title is updated, so that's reflected from the value that we're passing down, which we're setting inside of recoil state. And if I go to the footer, instead of passing the prop down, I'm going to do the same thing I do in home page. I'm going to do the same thing that I do inside home page, except this time I don't need to set the state value here. All I need to do is read it. So I could theoretically still use recoil state and only destructure business name. But according to the recoil docs, what I should actually be doing is using their hook use recoil value. So what I'll do in footer is I will import use recoil value from recoil. I'm going to delete this and instead I'm going to import business name state from Adams and I'm going to use recoil value pass in business name state and I'm not destructuring anything because what it's doing is it's returning the value directly so it's not returning an object it's not returning an array it's returning the actual business name so I save that now we'll go back to the app you can see now that the footer has the value that I have in state. So if I was to fill this out, both the, the title, which is taking it as a prop, and the footer, which is reading it from recoil state, are working. Now, if we have a look at the, the docs here regarding state, we have a few other hooks that we can use. So I would advise you to read through the docs there, but we've already demonstrated use recoil state. We've demonstrated use recoil value. We have use set recoil state, which as you can imagine is just the setter. So what that does is it returns the setter function. So here's an example. We take the atom and we have down here, we pass the atom into use set recoil state and that gives you the setter. So that's useful if you have a component where you only need to set the value in state as opposed to actually reading it and setting it. We'll go to the next one, use reset recoil state. And what that does is it will reset the state to the default value, which you might remember we've set inside of the atom. There are a few other hooks here as well. Use recall state loadable, use recall value loadable. These are a little bit more complex and I would encourage you to have a look at the documentation. As far as a simple setting and getting of state, these are the hooks that you're gonna use. Now, if we go back into the basic tutorial and have a look at selectors, you can see here it says a selector represents a piece of derived state, okay? So we'll have a look down here and it gives us an example of how you might use a selector. So the selector will take existing items inside of a recoil state and then perform whatever calculation you require on that value and return that derived piece of state. So in this case, in this example, what we're seeing here is we're creating a new item of state using a selector. And we're calling it filtered to-do list state. So we're giving that the same key. And then there's this get function, which we then use to get to-do list filter state and to-do list state. Okay, so we have the filter and we have the list here. And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna filter the list based on this filter value and return a derived piece of state. And finally, if you watched my context video, you'll see that we created a custom hook called use business name context. I can do exactly the same thing with recoil. I can create a hook called use business name. And in here, I'm going to do import use re recoil state, which is here from recoil. I'm going to import the atom business name state from Adams. I'm going to do use business name. And then I'm going to export that as default. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this code from the app component, paste it in there, and then I'm simply going to return 
business name and set business name. Now I can return this in an array as well if I want, but because we're only using business name and set business name, there's no need to give me the ability to rename these when I'm destructuring. So I'm just for simplicity, just gonna return an object at which point I can destructure business name and set business name and keep them named the same way. So now we go back in the home page and instead of importing the atom, I'm gonna import my hook, use business name. Um, use business name, delete that, use business name, and this of course is an object. To import it twice, and I also don't need to import this. So here it's just simplified again because I just need to import the hook and then use the hook here below. And you can see that the app still works as expected. It's using the default value of Dunder Mifflin and everything still works. Title, input and footer all still work.